Well, let's talk about some of the fierce politics that are driving some of this. The Arizona Republican Party is planning a vote to censure some of their own members, including Governor Doug Ducey, former Senator Jeff Flake, and Cindy McCain for allegedly abandoning the Republican values. Uh, McCain responded earlier on The View saying that it's the Republican Party that's lost its way. Let's listen. Uh, the Republican Party was the party of inclusion. It was the party of generosity. It was a party of country first. We have lost our way, and I, I truly hope that as things progress on and, and we get further away from this, this mess that occurred, that, that we can do just that. We can get back on track and remind everyone uh, that we are here for the country, not our party. Well, what happens in the Republican Party is important to the whole country. And for more on that, let's bring in former Congressman Denver Riggleman, a Republican who represented uh, Virginia's 5th District. Congressman, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, now, during your, your tenure, you, you had your differences with President Trump and the Republican Party. You officiated at a gay marriage, and seemingly you paid the price for all that. You lost your bid for re-election to a Republican in a, in a primary convention. So what do you think when you hear Cindy McCain says, saying that the GOP has lost its way? She's right. It's a mess. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that there were many leaders who are afraid to tell the truth right up front, especially with the conspiracy theories. Starting back, you know, goodness gracious, I did the QAnon resolution with Tom Malinowski months ago. Even before that, we submitted it. We saw that the radicalized language was causing some real issues. And by the way, you were talking about, you know, my convention. Um, the issue that we had was conspiracy theories were started about me uh, after the same sex wedding that were pretty heinous. I'm not even going to tell them on the air. But when I started looking into this back in 2019, that's when I started to really become familiar with QAnon and what was going on there. And with my background in intelligence and counterterrorism, it, it sort of fascinated me. And then when I started to look into it, it sort of terrified me. And Congressman, you posted a Twitter thread on, on why impeachment is necessary, saying that allowing President Trump to walk away validates conspiracy theories and disinformation. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, I, I found it interesting that the uh, many of my Republican colleagues uh, wouldn't vote for impeachment because they said they needed evidence, which was readily available to them. But the, uh, the, the thing that they were actually fighting on, Stop the Steal, the 147 votes uh, that they voted to object to the electors was based on no evidence at all. And once you have conspiracy theories and disinformation uh, really weaponized and starting violence, uh, we have to do something about that. We can't reward violence um, sort of with, with appeasement. And I think that's the issue that I have right now, looking at the cascading effects of this as an intelligence officer perspective, not a politician, is that if we allow this to happen and people get off scot-free, they're going to think they were right, that President Trump did have something on these individuals. There was a deep state cabal. This is a scary time, and I think, I think we really need to really buck up, stand in the breach, and ensure that, that we're stopping this nonsense. Well, if I may, let me follow up on that. It is a, a dangerous time. Once this kind of thinking gets into an organization, hard to get it out. And there are many Republicans who responded to the insurrection, uh, this kind of thing you're talking about, the aftermath of the election. They've left the Republican Party, so you're going to stay. Why? You know, uh I was going to leave. And, uh, you know, somebody told me, like, Denver, you know, do you want to, you know, bomb it from the outside or fix it from the inside? And that's the issue. I'm still trying to make that decision, to be completely honest with, with both of you. You know, how do I, how do we fix this? You know, do I do I try to fix it from the inside when it looks almost hopeless? Do, do I try to do it as an independent? You know, what, what do I do here? And, and the thing is this, is that I feel like maybe I can help, based on my background in counterterrorism and intelligence and disinformation and how radicalization works, Maybe we can bring the Republican Party back to the policy or, or back to this party of ideas and policy. Here's what I'm going to tell you guys. So there's a time limit on that. There's only a few months. I've talked to a lot of colleagues of mine. And if we don't have people that start to stand up and spit facts, if we don't have people that, that actually know, you know, that actually vote for accountability, it's going to be very difficult to stay in the Republican Party. And right now, I'm not quite I'm sorry, Mike Pence is fly, but um, I'm just not quite sure. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure if I'm supposed to be staying here. I don't know where I belong right now. I feel a little bit tribalist, but I, I'm an American, and it's my duty to speak out against this kind of nonsense and ridiculousness that you see in people that, that promulgated and perpetuated Stop the Steal, which is just a big conspiracy sticky bomb of ridiculousness that we have to reject. It, it is a terrible problem that, uh, that we all face, and Congressman Denver Riggleman, thanks. Good luck in addressing it. Thank you very much. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.